Looks like we have got to change this brake chamber. This 3030, that's the double one. It's got the parking brake in it as well as a as a brake um, for applying the brake. I got the wheel off. I had to check the spring inside the drum because this thing is not returning. It goes pressure goes out, but then the rod doesn't want to return and come back into its resting position. So I wanted to make sure, that's why I took the wheels off, to make sure that this spring in here was not um, broken or something and, and keeping it from coming back. So this is checking out good here, except it's dirty. I'm going to clean that up a little bit before I put the wheels back on. But Anyway, we're going to change the brake chamber. I called the owner and he said he's got one in the bunk. Well, we drug it out, and here it is, so we'll be putting that on. To start with, just to do the brake, I wasn't planning on spending any time underneath the truck at that point. That's why I just used this Harbor Freight uh, regular three-ton floor jack to pick up that one wheel. It's enough for that, but it's not the best idea to be crawling around under there with that as the only support, so I'm going to bring a bottle jack out and put it underneath the differential as well. That is way too tight. Let's get her back. Get it out of the way so I can try to bust this loose. Do it. I got them broke loose, but they're still awful tight. I'm having to double wrench every little bit of it. too loose yet because I got to get this other stuff off. I need it to hold on there for me. I got hoses to take off on top and then I got to get this clevis off. Yeah, this clevis here is going to be a little bit of a job to get off. Sometimes that's hard. Got to get this bolt out. It's not really a bolt. It's a pin and it's got a it's got either a spring-loaded clip that goes behind it or a cotter pin and uh, there's a smaller pin over here it's the same way I'm underneath this thing now and here are those little clips I was talking about you gotta take those little cotter pins out and then knock these two pins out and then we can take the clevis off this is the setup I got over here for sitting underneath the truck that I'm trying to use and it's giving me trouble. This little monitor is supposed to be color and it's supposed to tell me when I've got it on record or standby but all of that is not working. That's the other camera and it's, both of them are just sitting there mounted on a little chunk of three inch channel iron and they're running off of a battery over here, lawnmower battery. I rigged all that up so I can get in some of these weird places with this stuff and have a way to see what I'm doing because I can't see what's on that little tiny look at that I can't see what's on that but this I can turn that one around and and face it in different angles without moving the camera to see what's on it but well technology is great these days when it works I'm breaking this hose loose right now we're going to have issues with getting this off. I'm going to try to take this thing off and leave this on there because this pin is rusted in here 
so tight the only way to get it out is with a torch and I can't use a torch down here next to all this rubber and grease. I gotta try to take this all off together in one piece. Now this hose that goes up here to this manifold valve here this end has a swivel on it and so I went on and took that one off because it'll it'll keep turning without turning the hose the fitting wheel this end won't and so now that that end is off here it is right in my face now I can turn this one and get that off of there and I'm doing the same thing with the other hose on there but it's up there and that one has air pressure on it it's holding the parking brake in and out of the way and so I want to get everything ready to come off before I take that one off yeah I'm easier getting these off from up here on top here's the one over here with the swivel on it but if I take that off now it'll leak and then the spring brakes will apply themselves and I'm not ready for that. I want to get this thing unbolted off of there first. But I don't want to unbolt it till I got everything loose that I got to get off of it. And so this hose is coming off. It's um, almost off, but I can't take it off yet because it's got air pressure on it. I think I'm ready. I got this hose off. So let's just remember that the one that goes to the back is the one that's closest to the, uh, the drive shaft here. That's the hose that goes back there. And let's remember the position of these brass fittings in there. This one is facing back here towards this hose. And this one's facing up so that it can go onto that one. Well, now down underneath here again, I got this lock nut that adjust this thing I got that loose you can see that turns even with my fingers right now these are broke loose but they're still quite a, a fight to turn them and I'm gonna get those off of there now because everything else is loose I got it off um, this is part of the slack adjuster it goes up inside the slack adjuster it's got rocks on it I have to clean it off before I put it back together the grease is all brown. That's not a good sign. It means it's full of rust. That's because this pin right here would not come out. That's why I had to do it the hard way. But uh, I'll pull this stuff off of it and clean it up. And then we'll force this pin out. And then this thing here comes off. The new one has a longer shaft on it, and that's normal. They all do. You have to cut the shaft off to length. So you just find out how long this one is from here to here, and you cut it off at that length. And uh, I'll do that on video, too. You never know just what method you're going to need to get this thing apart. It looks like I found what's going to work for me this time is I just wedge a screwdriver in here or it could be a, a wrench and then I stick another wrench in here and I got it to start moving and sometimes I got to go to other measures but I usually get it off one way or another without having to replace everything
but I'm going to leave this lock nut pretty much where it is as a reference for how long to cut the other one off. It's an old, rusty, hard one, and nothing's working the right way, so got to fight with it tooth and nail all the way to the end. I already got over an hour in this thing. I'm going to try to get this thing off without heating it up. I don't know if I can. Go get a socket and put underneath it. Just tap on the top of it a little bit, see if I can break it loose. Try to keep that in the video. I don't know if I can or not. It came out. Couldn't do that underneath. Of course, I didn't have room to get at it with a hammer either. this one on there. Okay, we're going to screw this lock nut down. Just screw it down pretty much all the way. I'm going to measure the distance here to the bottom side because these lock nuts can be different thicknesses. So we're going to measure to the bottom side of that one. Bring this one out just about an eighth of an inch. That's about where we want it. Now I'm going to take this one off. I'm going to screw it, this one back down on here also. And this one we're going to use to clean the threads. How far out do we want to go? Looks like to have just a little bit of thread on the outside of this. We'll give it a we'll cut it off about half an inch past that. That'll be plenty. That'll have me some thread on the outside of that. Well we gotta file it down a little bit, the corners of it, because it's gonna have a burr. Now, I can either cut this off with a a hacksaw, I can use a sawzall with a metal cutting blade, I can use a torch, um, I can use a, a cut-off wheel, a grinder cut-off wheel. There's a lot of different ways to cut that off, but I want at least half an inch of threads. I've decided to use a cutoff wheel.
Before I put this one back in, I'm going to take a wire brush and some solvent and clean these teeth off. That's the uh, the ratcheting mechanism inside the the um, slack adjuster, and then I also have to back off the the nut that holds the little ratcheting paw in place. Got that slack adjuster put back together and I'm ready to take this thing and put it back on. Sorry I didn't show everything on the video about putting the slack adjuster together but the rest of it is the same as cleaning as my video on cleaning a slack adjuster. I thought I was done. I forgot I gotta put these things on over here. Okay, I got those fittings off and I kind of cleaned the threads up a little bit, put some Teflon tape on them. And I'm going to stick them in the holes and mount the thing up there. I forgot to show something when I was mounting this. There's like a figure eight hole. It's an elongated hole that's got, it's narrow in the middle, it's like a hourglass shaped hole, top and bottom. And the reason is, because if you put this thing in where gravity would have you put it, on the bottom, your pin might not line up. Your clevis pin might not line up with the, with the hole in here. And so, you want to make sure that it either goes on the bottom one, like right now I can see the hole for the clevis up above this clevis and so I need to slide it back out and put that in on the upper side of those figure eight holes so that my pins will line up right. I put my Teflon tape on there didn't show you how sorry about that but anyway and I got it started, I, th I threaded that in there. This is the end that's got the swivel on it, so it's disconnected. It goes here, it's disconnected so that I can have the freedom to rotate it while I tighten this down and make sure that this is not going to be in the way of anything. Of course, the differential and the axle and the brake, all of those bounce up and down together evenly so that really as long as the hose isn't leaning on something, it's not like the differential is going to go up and down and the brake isn't. They, they go together, so that's not a problem. Now i got to thread this one in down here the same way, but I need a third hand because I'm holding the camera. So, And, and the, the end with the swivel is underneath the, the middle of the fifth wheel there. It's underneath there, but it's, it's loose. It's, it's hanging so it'll spin freely while while I tighten this end down. You got to get these end tightened down first before you tighten your swivel ends down. Got that end good and tight. Get the wrench back off of it. Now this end up here does not need any tape. That's got a ball end on it. See that like a gas pipe fitting. It's got a ball end on it so there's you don't need tape on that unless for some reason it's just leaking and it's boogered up somehow then you can put some tape on it and that would help you'd wrap it around the ball end and make sure you don't get it in front of the hole I'm trying to do that with one hand and the swivel's a little stiff and it could use some spray oh it's loosened up now it's going Okay, and then we just got to make sure we don't have any kinks in the hose. This hose had a kink in it before. We're going to try to straighten it out and get that kink out of there. All done. All I got to do now is put the tires back on because I got to adjust the brake and I can't adjust the brake with the tires off. Well, it's pouring down rain. 
and we've got a huge what I'm I'm gonna stick this screwdriver in here and pull it back and I'm gonna watch right in here I already pulled this back I know it's loose between the face of this brake chamber where the shaft goes in there I'm gonna pull this out and watch it does you don't have to measure it if you know what uh, an inch looks like an inch is what I want or thereabout I don't want much less than an inch and I don't want any more than an inch and a half and so I'm gonna pull this out I just stick that between these two here's convenient place for me to do it a big screwdriver and as you can see we're getting a lot more than an inch out of that so I'm gonna tighten that up if I was to tighten it too tight I'd have to be able to take this off I've got to be able to lift this thing up to tight to uh, loosen it up but on top of this slack adjuster right up here it's straight up from this thing here there's a, a bolt up there it's a square you can put a 5 16 open end wrench it's 5 16 square or you can put a 3 8 boxed wrench on it and I'm going to tighten it up carefully and then come back and keep checking because if I go too far then I got to lift this thing out because it's ratchets and it won't come backwards it only tightens it won't loosen up so I need to uh, make sure I don't tighten it too tight or else I got to lift this button up and then turn that screw up there backwards okay Kevin's going to tighten that up up there it's only going to turn one way turn it the other way there again yeah keep going now you can you can see this button ratcheting out okay stop let's I like that a lot better I like it right where it is we don't have to tighten it up anymore we don't have to loosen it up I'm going to do that to all four of them and that's how you adjust your brakes